3i atlas will be visible for the next few months before it leaves our solar system forever our next guest has gone viral several times for his hypothesis that the comet could actually be an alien spacecraft with quote hostile intentions harvard astrophysicist avi loeb has spent the past six months documenting every weird thing about 3i atlas and publishing paper after paper suggesting this might be alien technology so avi do you think it's a comet or do you think it's a spaceship well so far so good the um, uh, 3i atlas did not maneuver or display any unusual activity when it came closest to earth um, you know some uh, earthlings might find it insulting but the truth of the matter is that uh, with its initial speed um, it must have taken it um, a billion years or man many billions year of years to cross the milky way galaxy and he's been very public about it going on news shows writing blog posts pressuring nasa to release images even getting a congresswoman to write a letter demanding investigation and then 3i atlas made its closest pass to Earth on December the 19th at a distance of about 170 million miles. And Loeb was watching very carefully to see what it would do. And now, just hours after the flyby, he's changed his position. He's saying it's most likely natural. Not definitely natural, but most likely. And that's a pretty big reversal from a guy who's been documenting 15 separate anomalies that he claims have astronomically low probabilities of occurring naturally. So what did he see during that Earth flyby that made him change his mind. What he saw that changed everything. December 19th was the critical test. This was the moment when 3i Atlas would come within 170 million miles of Earth, and if this thing had any kind of propulsion system or intelligent control, this would be the time to use it. Think about it from the perspective of an alien probe. You've just spent billions of years traveling through interstellar space, and now you're approaching the only planet in this solar system that has life and civilization and radio signals, you wouldn't just fly past and ignore it. You'd do something. You'd adjust your course to get a better look. You'd change your velocity to slow down. You'd turn on your instruments or your lights or your transmitters. You'd give some indication that you're aware of what you're looking at. And Avi Loeb was expecting exactly that. He'd been publishing blog posts in the days leading up to the flyby, talking about what kind of maneuvers we might see, what the signatures would be if 3i Atlas fired an engine, what it would look like if it adjusted its trajectory. He wanted NASA to release the high-resolution images from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that were supposedly taken back in October. He was pushing for real-time observations during the close approach. He was basically treating this like the moment of truth. So what actually happened? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. In Loeb's own words from his interview with News Nation just hours after the flyby, he said, So far so good. 3i Atlas did not maneuver or display any unusual activity when it came closest to Earth. That's it. The object just kept tumbling along on the exact trajectory that astronomers had predicted based purely on gravitational calculations. No course corrections, no velocity changes beyond what the sun's gravity would naturally cause, no mysterious signals, no lights turning on, no indication of any kind of intelligent control whatsoever. And this is massive, because if you've been following Loeb's argument for the past six months, the whole case for 3i, Atlas being artificial, rested on the idea that its behavior couldn't be explained by natural processes alone. The non-gravitational acceleration it displayed near perihelion, the perfectly aligned rotation axis, the anti-tail pointing directly at the sun, all of these things suggested something was actively controlling the object's movement. But if it had propulsion, if it had the ability to maneuver, then the Earth flyby was the moment to prove it. This was the most interesting destination in the inner solar system, and 3i Atlas just… sailed right past without even slowing down. It's like if you spent months documenting all the ways a mysterious aircraft was behaving strangely, suggesting it might be an alien spacecraft. And then when it flew directly over New York City, it didn't change altitude or speed or direction or do anything at all. At some point, you have to ask yourself, maybe it's just a weird plane. Maybe all those anomalies have natural explanations that we haven't figured out yet. And that's exactly what Loeb is saying now. The lack of any maneuver during the Earth flyby is strong evidence that 3i Atlas is probably just a comet, albeit a very strange one. Now, he's not saying he was wrong about the anomalies. 
He's not retracting his papers or admitting that he made mistakes in his calculations. All 15 of those weird characteristics are still real. They're still documented in peer-reviewed journals. They're still things that need to be explained. But the probability assessment has shifted. When you combine those 15 anomalies with the fact that the object didn't do anything during its closest approach to an inhabited planet, the natural explanation starts looking a lot more likely than the artificial one. So what were those 15 anomalies that convinced Loeb this might be alien tech in the first place? And if they're all real, how can they possibly be explained naturally? That's where this gets interesting. The 15 anomalies Loeb documented. Avi Loeb is not some fringe conspiracy theorist on the internet. He's the former chair of Harvard's astronomy department. He's the head of the Galileo project, which is specifically designed to search for evidence of alien technology. And he's published hundreds of peer-reviewed papers over his career. So when he starts documenting anomalies and calculating probabilities, he's doing it with the full weight of academic rigor behind him. These aren't wild speculations. They're observations that he and other astronomers have made using the best telescopes available. The first set of anomalies has to do with geometric coincidences, which is a fancy way of saying that 3i Atlas arrived at our solar system with a trajectory that was suspiciously well aligned with things it shouldn't have been aligned with. The object's path through space came in at an angle that was within 5 degrees of the ecliptic plane, which is the flat disk where all the planets orbit. The probability of a random interstellar object arriving with that kind of alignment? 0.2%. Not impossible, but pretty unlikely. Then there's the arrival time. 3i Atlas showed up positioned perfectly to pass near both Mars and Jupiter at distances that would allow for close observation by spacecraft we already have in those locations. Again, not impossible, but the timing is suspiciously convenient. And when it gets to Jupiter in March 2026, the closest approach distance will be 53.6 million kilometers, which just happens to match Jupiter's hill radius, the boundary where the planet's gravity dominates over the sun's gravity. Loeb calculated that this match has a probability of occurring by chance in the single-digit percentages. But those are just the trajectory coincidences. The really weird stuff starts when you look at how 3i Atlas is actually behaving. Remember that anti-tail we've talked about in previous videos, the jet of material that points toward the sun instead of away from it? Well, Loeb's team analyzed images from July 2025 and found that this anti-tail was tightly collimated to within 8 degrees, meaning it formed a very narrow beam that stayed focused over distances of hundreds of thousands of kilometers. No known comet has ever exhibited an anti-tail with that kind of tight collimation before. The probability? He estimates it in the sub-1% range. Then there's the rotation axis. Multiple observations showed that 3i Atlas's rotation axis was aligned to within 8 degrees of the sunward direction when it entered the solar system. This is anomaly number 14 in Loeb's count, and the probability of that happening by chance is 0.5%. And it gets weirder because the wobbling jet that was detected before perihelion required the base of that jet to be positioned within 8 degrees of the sun-facing pole, which has the same 0.5% probability. Wait, there's more. After perihelion, a new anti-tail jet appeared on the opposite pole of 3i Atlas, and for this to happen the way it did requires a whole sequence of unlikely events. The original jet base had to be on the night side before perihelion, then, after perihelion, a new pocket of ice near the opposite pole had to start venting. And the timing and positioning of all this has a combined probability that Loeb calculates at 0.000025%. That's 25 in a million. And here's one that really caught people's attention. The direction that 3i Atlas arrived from in the galaxy happens to be aligned to within 9 degrees of the source location of the famous Yuao signal from 1977, that mysterious radio transmission that looked like it might be from an alien civilization. The probability of that alignment occurring by chance? 0.6%. Now, Loeb is careful to say this doesn't prove anything. Coincidences happen all the time, but when you start stacking up all these low probability events, one after another, you start to wonder. We get into the composition anomalies. The gas cloud surrounding 3 eyed Atlas contains way more nickel than iron and the ratio is similar to what you'd find in industrially produced nickel alloys. 
Natural space rocks typically have nickel and iron in roughly equal proportions because they're formed together in dying stars. Loeb also found that the nickel to cyanide ratio is orders of magnitude higher than what's been observed in thousands of known comets, and the water content is only about 4% by mass, whereas normal solar system comets are typically 80% or more water ice. The physical properties are equally strange. 3i Atlas is more massive than both 1i Oumuamua and 2i Borisov, the previous interstellar objects, but it's also moving faster than both of them. It shows extreme negative polarization, which is unprecedented for any comet ever observed. During its perihelion passage, it brightened about 400 times, which is way more than what you'd expect from a typical comet at that distance from the Sun. And it turned bluer than the Sun itself, which Loeb suggests could be evidence of artificial light sources or some kind of ionized gas that doesn't normally appear in cometary comas. And finally, that anti-tail that we keep talking about. The latest images from mid-December show it extending out to half a million kilometers from the nucleus, which is larger than the distance from the Earth to the Moon. No comet has ever been observed with an anti-tail that large. To maintain that structure over the 45 days since perihelion would require the material in the anti-tail to be moving at speeds of at least 130 meters per second away from the nucleus, and there's no clear natural mechanism that could sustain that kind of velocity. So that's 15 separate anomalies, each one documented with actual observations and probability calculations, many of them published in peer-reviewed scientific journals. And when you multiply all those probabilities together, you get a number so small that it suggests 3i Atlas should basically not exist if it's a natural object. This is why Loeb was so convinced it might be artificial. The numbers don't lie, and the numbers were saying this thing is weird beyond anything we've ever seen. But numbers can be misleading, probabilities can be calculated wrong, and even if all the math is correct, a one in a million event still happens. So how do we explain all of this without resorting to aliens? The natural explanation and the open door. Theoretical physicist Mikio Kaku offered what might be the key to understanding 3i Atlas without needing to invoke alien technology, and it all comes down to age. Based on trajectory analysis and the object's velocity, astronomers estimate that 3i Atlas could be as old as 7 billion years. That's nearly twice the age of our entire solar system. Our Sun is only about 4.6 billion years old, and most of the comets we're familiar with formed around the same time as the Sun. But 3i Atlas comes from somewhere much older, somewhere in the thick disk of the Milky Way galaxy, where stars and planetary systems have been forming and dying for billions of years longer than our own neighborhood. And here's what Kaku points out. If you're 7 billion years old and you've spent all that time drifting through interstellar space, you're going to encounter a lot of different environments. You'll pass through nebulae with different chemical compositions. You'll get exposed to radiation from nearby supernovae. You'll collect dust and gas from regions of the galaxy that have completely different elemental abundances than what we see in our local area. Over billions of years, all of that accumulates. Your surface chemistry gets altered, your ice composition changes, you pick up metals and organic compounds that wouldn't naturally be part of a comet that formed in our solar system. This explains the nickel anomaly. It's not that 3i Atlas was manufactured with industrial nickel alloys, it's that over 7 billion years it's had time to accumulate different gases, different elements, different kinds of environments that it goes into, as Kaku puts it. The nickel content is off scale, not because it's artificial, but because it's ancient. Same thing with the weird water to CO2 ratio. 3i Atlas probably didn't form in a place where water ice was the dominant frozen volatile. It might have formed in a region where carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide ices were more abundant, and then over billions of years of travel it picked up the small amount of water it currently has. The age also explains why the object is so massive compared to 1i Oumuamua and 2i Borisov. Those objects are probably much younger, maybe only a few hundred million years old, and they haven't had as much time to accumulate mass through collisions with interstellar dust particles. 3i Atlas had billions of years to slowly grow by sweeping up material as it traveled through the galaxy. It's like the difference between a young snowball and a snowball that's been rolling downhill for hours, picking up more and more snow along the way. But Loeb isn't fully convinced. Yes, 
Age can explain some of the compositional anomalies, but it doesn't explain all of the geometric coincidences. Why would an ancient comet just happen to arrive aligned with the ecliptic plane? Why would its rotation axis point at the Sun? Why would it pass Jupiter at exactly the hill radius distance? Age doesn't account for trajectory, and trajectory is where a lot of the low probability events are concentrated, and he's still pushing for NASA to release those October 2nd images from the high-rise camera on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Those images were supposedly taken when the federal government shut down, and they haven't been made public yet. Loeb argues that the politics of the day should not sabotage science, and he wants those images released so that scientists can analyze them and potentially find more clues about what 3i Atlas actually is. He's not ready to close the book on this investigation just because the object didn't maneuver during the Earth flyby. And there's still one more test coming. On March 16th, 2026, 3i Atlas will fly within 53.6 million kilometers of Jupiter. If the object is going to do anything unusual, that would be another opportunity. Jupiter is the most massive planet in the solar system. It has the strongest magnetic field. And if 3i Atlas has any kind of propulsion system or any reason to interact with planetary environments, Jupiter would be the place to do it. Loeb will be watching that flyby very carefully. And if 3i Atlas shows any sign of maneuvering or unusual activity near Jupiter, all bets are off and the alien tech theory comes roaring back. But for now, his position is most likely natural. Not definitely, not certainly, not beyond any doubt, but most likely. The failure to maneuver during the Earth flyby was the critical piece of evidence that shifted the probabilities. An alien probe wouldn't just ignore the most interesting planet in the solar system, it would do something. And since 3i Atlas didn't do anything, the simplest explanation is that it can't do anything because it doesn't have propulsion. It's just a very old, very weird comet from a very different part of the galaxy. What this means for the broader story of 3i Atlas is that the media hype is probably going to die down now. Loeb was the main scientific voice pushing the alien technology angle. And without him championing that theory, most news outlets will move on to other stories. 3i Atlas goes from being a potential alien spacecraft to being just another interstellar comet, albeit one with some unusual properties that scientists will continue to study. But that doesn't make it any less scientifically valuable. Even if it's natural, 3i Atlas is still only the third confirmed interstellar object we've ever detected, and it's by far the largest and most active. Every observation we make, every spectrum we analyze, every image we capture, is teaching us something about how planetary systems form in other parts of the galaxy. We're learning what's normal elsewhere versus what's unique to our own solar system. And that's important work, even if it doesn't involve aliens. Loeb's final thought on all of this is worth remembering. When you have a visitor to your backyard, you better know its nature. Whether it's natural or artificial, whether it's a comet or something else, we have a scientific obligation to study it thoroughly and figure out what it is. And maybe that's the real lesson here. Sometimes the most extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and sometimes the absence of that evidence is itself an answer. Please like and subscribe for more 3i Atlas updates. Thanks for watching.